Well, I'm here with Rob Zabierski today. By the way, my name is Michael Angelo Caruso, and it's a pleasure to be with Rob every time I, I'm with him. Uh, I've, I've worked with him live. I've worked with him on uh, uh, some webinar calls like this one, and he's just such a kindred spirit. And I don't know why it is so hard for me to find kindred spirits in the speaking <laughs> business. Perhaps, Rob, because there are a lot of people in the, in the speaking business who I don't know, they get there by hook or by crook, and I don't mean that pejoratively, they just kind of become speakers. Yeah. And they earn their way into it eventually, but man, you are the real deal, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you, we smell our own, Michael, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fire, man, I'm fired up to be chatting with you again. It's been too long. I know, uh, where are you at today? I'm home, I've been home for almost a month, and I, I'm, I'm freaking out, I feel like I should be in a TSA line somewhere. It's been, well, been a you, while you since I've been on airplane. You may be and don't know it yet, who knows? Yeah. But uh, no, I'm home in Chicago, right outside Chicago, where it's a uh, balmy one, maybe yeah. two today? I don't know, yeah, it's been- Cold, been, cold front is here too. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting connection between the weather and what you do for a living. Uh, for everyone listening, Rob is one of the premier memory experts in the country from my money he's an expert on how this little thing works and how we can improve our capacity he makes his living traveling around the world doing programs teaching people how they can improve their memory improve their storage capacity uh, rob how do you talk about it you've got many uh, ways that you describe what you do yeah I, i'm trying out a new one we'll see i unscrew thinking that's, that's the latest and greatest I'm trying. You unscrew thinking. I unscrew yeah. thinking. Many people's thinking kind of screws them up. So I'm in, I'm in the business of unscrewing thinking. Yeah, uh, my company, Freedom Personal Development, we, we do personal and professional development training programs. So we do all kinds of skills-based and mindset training that all fundamentally all help make you a better you. So we do programs on memory training and speed reading, attitude, goal setting, time management, literally how to train your own brain uh, in order to be more successful in everything that you do. Well, the brain's so important. Everybody talks about the most important organ and they talk about the heart or they talk about the colon, which does its dirty food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people talk about the skin being the largest organ. I don't know about you, but I use my brain almost every day. It, I try to. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk, let's make that connection between uh, say weather and, and, and brain function. Mm -hmm. um, specifically with regard to short-term memory. So there's a real cold patch coming through the Midwest right now. And it's interesting, this thing called recency, where everybody thinks just because it's happening now or that it just happened, that it must be more important than things that happened in the past. But is that because our long-term memory somehow doesn't, uh, there's something about our long-term memory, I guess by definition, it wouldn't be recency, but there's something about long-term memory that makes things less important than stuff that's happening right now. How do you talk about this in your programs? Yep. So one of the fundamental things that we talk about the, in, in how it works, like how your memory works, we talk about primacy and recency, meaning your brain, it always remembers the first thing that it hears or experiences and the last thing that it hears or experiences. So in a conversation or in, here, in a list, if you're trying to remember a list of things, Nine times out of 10, your brain is always going to remember the first thing on the list and the last thing on the list. Mm -hmm. This is one of the fun exercises we do in one of our workshops. Where I rattle off a list of 20 things and see how many people can get right using whatever memory methodology they have. And people always get number one and they get number 20 and they get nothing in the middle. That's funny. Um, so understand, understanding that yeah, your brain just naturally remembers first thing it heard and last thing it heard. So what we always encourage people to do is when it comes to recalling any type of information, lists, conversation details, um, Bible verses, chapters and books, breaking things up into smaller chunks in order to create more beginnings and more ends, that fundamentally just the way, you're, way it works, that, that automatically results in an overall increase in your memory capacity. It's the same application when you're talking about the merits of a, of a long four-hour meeting versus a four hour sit down with three breaks, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you get, if there's a beginning to the segment, instead of having one beginning to the segment, the four hour segment, you have three beginnings and actually four beginnings and four endings, mm -hmm. taking three breaks, correct? Yep. You, yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, if you have four hours and you do four one hour sessions, I mean, provided that you do a little bit of review, that's part of the, part of how it works too. And um, there's a name for that. I've heard it called, uh, 
interval training or interval spacing? Spaced repetition is what we call it. Yep, spaced repetition. We refer to it as one hour, one day, one week as with regards to moving things into your long-term or, you know, into your, your long-term memory or your memory bank. Tell, um, tell us about that one hour, one. one yeah, when, what we teach people is if you want to, in, any piece of information that you want to recall and, and commit to memory for the long-term, you need to review it after one hour, one day, and then one week. So I've done this at networking events. Um, I'll meet somebody and you know how it goes. Uh, you just met him like five minutes ago and there they are across the room. Yeah. What was his name again? I know that guy. I know him. Hey, Johnny Big Nose. No, yeah, him. no, no. Especially if it's a woman. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's what, and there's, like you can telescope in and out of this one hour, one day, one week, right? So I can try to remember him in the conversation in one minute. I can remember his name. Mm -hmm. I can try to remember him five minutes from now when he's across the room and I get the visual cue. Mm -hmm. And then going to your formula, I can try to remember his name on the way home one hour from now. Yep. Car. Better yet, at the end of when you say goodbye to him. Yeah. That's usually, that's why it's called a cocktail hour. Right. Or a happy yeah. hour. And you and I are old enough to remember when we used to call networking drinking. Networking drink, yes. <laughs> yes, we are. And then one week from now, what was that guy's name again? And you may have his business card, but the idea is not to cheat if you don't have to, right? Yeah, the goal, yeah, the goal is to get it. The goal is to get it into that long-term working memory so that when you run into that dude at the grocery store and you see him, you're not hiding behind the mayonnaise because you can't remember his name and you're embarrassed to, to get called out on it. You know, it's, it's all about little, you know, the little, not tricks, but the, what, what are the skills that you use to move that important information into the party brain where you can access it when you need it. Right. Yeah. I mean, granted, there's a lot of people you probably meet that you don't want to remember and that's fine. Just don't, don't review them. <laughs> don't think of them. Your brain will do a fantastic job of forgetting about them. And you know, it occurs to me that if you eat a lot of mayonnaise, you're probably too large to hide behind it. If yeah, you're taking mayonnaise at home, just a little note to yourself there. Yeah. Okay. Don't eat it. You can polish your furniture with it, but don't eat it. I had the pleasure uh, and distinct pleasure of working with you. Actually, I think we brought you in for this event because I was kind of in charge of it. I guess I technically hired you and you were so gracious about your fee, which is well-deserved these days because Thank very you. few people do what you do. But when you came to, to, to our audience, uh, I promised them big things and you did not let them down. The first thing is when you work live, you don't work from the stage. You've got a, just a ton of energy. I've never seen anybody quite like you. Yeah. But you also walk everybody through the, the memorization of 20 things. And you, I love how you kind of embed it into your program. You yeah. don't begin by saying, okay, I'm going to help you remember 20 things. You, you first, you cultivate the relationship. You do everything you're supposed to do. So my, my point is you're not scientific about this. You're human about it. Tell I mean, us a little bit about, for those that haven't seen you, how you do that. You take people through the memorization of 20 things. It's, it's a remarkable demonstration. Thank you. It's uh, so, yeah, you're talking about that, yeah, that list of 15 that we do in the middle when I have people okay. come up with that random list and some poor soul has to stand up and try and recite it back to us. And it's very so entertaining because people, the but then I rattle. Yeah. People so, are playing along with you. It's an old speaker technique called bust them and build them, right? You, yeah. The good sport tries to remember, but they can't. Everybody room in, in the room is laughing because they can't remember either. Yeah. And then I'll be darn, the re big reveal is you've remembered all 20 things yeah. as you've been entertaining us. Yeah. I don't need to know your secrets, but tell us a little bit about how that works with most people. Yeah. So <laughs> for most people, it doesn't work. For more people. Because they just don't have the system in place. And that's really, that's what we do in the programs, in, in, in the bigger workshops and programs that, that I get hired to come out and do is we, we teach you a system for how to recall any piece of information. Um, it, the best part about a system is there's a checks and balances. So there's only a couple moving parts involved in, in committing any piece of information to memory. You know, there's, there's the file where you're gonna store the information. There's a, a picture, a visual representation of the piece of information you're trying to to recall and then there's the glue there's how you stick the picture into the file so you either have the information in the right place or you don't you've got a really great picture to represent that piece of information or you don't or you use enough glue to stick it in there action motion or you didn't so 
what I'm waxing poetic here, but basically the nice part is we, we help people understand that when it comes to recalling any piece of information, what are those three moving pieces? Do you have the pieces in the right place? so that fundamentally the information gets to the right place so you can access it again later on when you need it. It could be five minutes from now, it could be an hour from now, it could be a week from now, it could be a year from now. Just giving you the tool that you can use to, to commit that to memory. I know that it's a course, it's not a, uh, it's not a drive-by, like you go see Rob one time and you get this, you have to take the course, you have to almost literally recondition your brain for this file, picture, glue scenario. I've been trying it, Rob. Oh, good. We're a uh, chemical-free house, so we don't use glue here. We use mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, perfect. Yeah. Way better. Uh, actually, no, but it's been interesting. Um, tell everybody your website where people can find out more about the course and about your speaking. Yeah, you can learn all about my, me and my, my team and our programs at freedompersonaldevelopment.com. Dot com. Very good. And you're all over social. The easy way to find Rob on social is he's Rob with two Bs. Yeah, R-O-B-B. And I'll spell the last name for you because it's a little fun with Z like zebra, B like boy, I E R S K I. Love it. You plug Rob Zabirsky into the Googles, you'll find some great stuff. That's because you're the only Rob Zabirsky with two B's. Only Rob. There's not too many of us floating around. That's good. Um, how many speaking engagements did you do last year? Did you lose count? I, uh, I had lost count. And then in, I was doing my rear end review and uh, I was and right around – right around 50, somewhere between 50 and 60 uh, programs I did last year, which was uh, from a number of, number of presentation standpoint, actually down pretty significantly. Oh. Um, however, I'm, the, the way my business has shifted in doing a lot more corporate programs and in-house trainings. So my, my revenues were actually went up while my number of engagements went down, which is as you know, and what we do, not a bad, not a bad equation. So yeah. it was, Hey, I worked my tail off, but, um, had a ton of fun. It's, I love my, my it's, it's barely a job. I know it's corny, but man, I, you, I know we've talked about this. It's, I fly around the country helping people learn how to be a better version of themselves. I sleep okay at night. And you get rewarded for it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, uh, a parallel question here, uh, but, but a little setup. So I've been doing a lot of work lately with financial services companies. Mm-hmm. You know, I find myself in, in different niches periodically and all of a sudden in financial services. What groups of people hire you? Who, who seems to be most important, or most uh, interested in improving their, their, their brain functions? Is, can you isolate to certain industries? Yeah, so I'll start. With, I mean, there's like, at the end of the day, there's nobody that wouldn't benefit from having a more powerful memory, right? So, I, I mean, we've worked with, we've worked the full gamut of people. Who, the groups that we primarily work with, yeah, we do a ton of work in financial services. Anybody who's client facing, direct, direct client facing, yep. absolutely benefits from this type of training because they're remembering names and faces and client details and numbers and lists and, 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 and. Um, so insurance, financial advisors, financial planners. Um, we've done a lot of work with accountants because, you know, it's kind of important to remember the right numbers. Um, I do a ton of work in the dental world. Um, a lot of times, just because these guys and gals are ch juggling so many patients every day and so many procedures and processes and staff and, and, and that just helping them get better organized and how they run their day. Yeah. It's, it's life changing uh, right. for some of my, my clients in that world. So that's been a ton of fun. Uh, and then I do a lot of work at the association. I, I do a lot of work with associations. Our, our, our content is in risk of sounding overly general, it's general enough that we can customize it to make it really relevant to virtually any type of audience. I, mean, I, I spoke with meeting planners this year. I worked with uh, car dealers. We've worked, we've worked with uh, fire apparatus manufacturers, uh, fire truck manufacturers, and bull semen salespeople. I mean, we, we, I run the gamut. Can you, can you imagine young budding speakers trying to make a, list, a wish list of who they want to speak to? I want to speak to fire truck manufacturers. Yeah. Oh, man, those guys, those guys are a riot. And gals. Uh, serious question on the way out the door. I know this comes up at a lot of your programs because it's so trending right now, this idea of uh, early Alzheimer's, dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading, and of course, the NFL is in the news right now. I was reading uh, about Jim McMahon. I actually saw a video of him, an interview recently, where he's talking about how he has early dementia. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys. Yeah. And he's a quarterback. You know, I don't know how often he got hit compared to, say, linemen who are 
butting heads all the time. Right. But this is a big deal now. And um, you don't make any guarantees that your techniques will help with early dementia. No. So I'm not a doctor. Um, my, my joke that I tell people is the only letters after my name are my last name. Uh, but that being said, I'm, I know what I've read and I know what I've studied. And when you talk about things like Alzheimer's and dementia, and I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I'm super, I saw the movie, but I don't understand the ins and outs of CTE, but those are all categorized as a disease. And so I, we don't cure diseases. However, that being said, the way your brain works, the, the methodology that we teach and the methodology that you use um, through what we call the mental file folder system, which is the, the, the methodology that we teach, there are studies that show that using your brain in a different way, i.e. using this methodology, has in some cases been proven to help offset early cognitive disintegration is the terminology they use. So, Which, which all of us get eventually. Pardon me? Which all of us get eventually. Yeah. I mean, the older, it, the older you get, things start to decline. That's just, sure. I, I'm not a chemist or a biologist or anything like that. But yeah, the cells, they grow, they die, they, they, new ones, they regenerate. And then as you get older, it doesn't happen as often. So yeah, brain cells count as cells. But ultimately, it's, you know, it's like, your brain is a muscle. It's an amazing, it's an amazing tool, organ, muscle, whatever you want to call it. And it needs to be exercised. It needs, it needs a workout. It needs memory training. It needs Sudoku. It needs crossword puzzles. It needs thinking about things in different ways. It, it needs to be challenged um, on a daily basis. So you know? do, we, we, do we worry, Rob, about the younger generation, um, the millennials as an example? Um, are they active enough? You know, uh, there's been a lot of talk about anybody who's grown up in the cell mm -hmm. generation may not be doing enough to uh, exercise critical thinking skills or um, uh, even in a conversation where you're talking to groups of people and you have to juggle a topic or come back and get something. Um, are we worried about the younger generation? Are they doing enough of this? What do you think? <clears throat> no, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I, no, yeah. listen, every quality of your life determined by the quality of your choices. Right. Some yeah. people, just, I know, I know younger generations that just choose not to participate in being hooked on tech. I know people who choose to be hooked on tech. I, well, I myself, I'm in this weird gray area where I, I zone out all the time. Fundamentally, I get, yeah, I do get asked this question all the time to get back to, to the point of this is I, I do my observation. And my belief is that as a, as a culture, we've, we've inherently gotten, I don't want to say, dumber but <laughs> less intelligent and and lazier thanks to technology yeah um it, it, it's it's tool i love technology i mean i'm i mind you, i'm so plugged in twitter checks me in the morning but it's at the same time we have to do things to use our brain and use our muscles you know, yeah. it's, it's atrophy of the it could be atrophy of the brain and yeah. so you have to well, make well to actively engage it it's not the millennials' fault. It's, it's the fact that society has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to, I think, uh, keep our head in the game, so to speak, and, and focus on developing this cabeza mm -hmm. and making it work for us in ways that, uh, if, if for no other reason, so it doesn't fail us in our mid-50s, like maybe with Jim McMahon. Or yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell you, and this is a potential, potential shameless plug, but one of the big proponents that we teach, <laughs> one of the big things that we teach and we share is that the simple act of slowing down will actually get, make your brain more available to absorb any type of information that yeah. you're looking. I mean, I'm guilty of this every day. You know, you click and you click and you swipe and you click and you swipe and you like and you don't like and you're, you're this and you're all over the place and you're boom, 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 boom. And then what, what we're talking about is in order to really speed up your results, you need to slow down your yeah. thing. I do a lot of uh, sales training, as you know, and that's one of the things I tell teams over and over again is to sell more slowly. Mm -hmm. um, it forces your brain to function in a different way. Same thing with golfing, by the way. The best golf tip I ever got, we'll wrap up here in a second, uh, was because uh, I was spraying the ball all over the course and the guy next to me says about the you know, hole 12 or hole 13, he says, yeah. would you like a tip? I said, it's about time. <laughs> yeah. No, so, nine holes ago would have been great. He says, Why don't you try swinging the club more slowly? Yeah. Oh, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I'm trying to kill the ball. How can I 
kill the ball if I'm swinging slowly. But I, when I slowed it down, I focused, I started thinking about my approach and the swing itself in a different way. Yeah. I probably didn't swing the club more slowly, but I hit it straighter. And it was that slowing down that you're talking about. I, I hardly endorse it. Yeah. I, my favorite analogy for this too is um, yeah, I fly, you, you fly a fair amount. I fly a lot, not as much as some people, but it's, a, it's interesting, you know, in order for a pilot to successfully complete the journey, right? To get you from Chicago to Palm Springs. Yeah. The last, the most important part of the pilot's job is pulling back on the throttle to slow down so the plane can actually land. That's fantastic. Slowing down. Yeah. Well, slowing down is what lowers the plane, to, right? Gravity starts to set in. If you, didn't, if you didn't slow down the plane, you literally would never land. And, and when we think about flying, all we think about is power, right? Just mm -hmm. like when we get up in the morning, I got to power through this day. And yeah. slowing down might be the best thing for us. Beautiful. Yeah. Rob Zabirsky is at freedompersonaldevelopment.com. You got it. It's Rob with two Bs. Yes. And uh, what a pleasure to be with you, man. I love okay. you. I, I hope we get a chance to work together in the coming months. And, um, and thanks for all you do to keep people sharp in the world. Yeah. Thank you to you as well. I appreciate it, man. It's been a blast. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing some more work together. My pleasure. Thanks, Rob. Right. Thanks, Michael. Take care.